This video is a lesson from my course on Discover Ansible. To find out more, visit discoveransible.com. Hi, I'm Creston, and in this video, we're going to be discussing Ansible bootstrapping, and we're going to make our first playbook. So bootstrapping, uh, you may be wondering, well, if all you need is SSH and Python, what do you need to bootstrap? And I don't mean in the traditional sense of bootstrapping where you get something on the system to be able to do configuration management, but I use a bootstrap playbook to handle changes in state that will impact my ability to connect to the server. For example, I disable root user access to my servers. So that is going to impact and is a state change. So I transition from using a root user to a standard user in my bootstrap playbook. In addition, um, I change the SSH port. You can choose to do this or not, but if you do it, you're going to change how you can connect to that server. So the bootstrap playbook puts the system in a different state. And then going forward, I use another playbook to manage it after it is in that uh, new state. The other benefit is that it quickly lets me secure a new server after bringing it up because typically these need patches applied uh, and I want to secure it in some other ways as well. All right, let's get started. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is we want to uh, go into your Ansible direct directory wherever you created it and then we want to create a, an additional folder and I'm going to create make a directory called certificates because I'm going to put my um, public uh, keys for SSH in this certificates directory. It's directory. So now I'm going to copy my public key for my in my home directory under .ssh uh, for my Creston user to the certificates directory. Uh, this just puts it in a convenient location for Ansible to use to be able to copy up to the server. The next thing that we want to do is we want to make a crypted password. Now I'm going to use this command called uh, make password. I'm going to specify the method of SHA-512 and I'm going to specify a uh, salt with this. Now, if you get a message like this, it means that you need to install uh, some additional packages and it may actually tell you what you need to install. So I'm going to install the whois package by doing sudo apt-get installed whois. And after that's done, run that make password command again. Now it's gonna ask me for a password and once I put that uh, password that I've chosen in, it's going to create this crypted password here. So you're going to want to copy this because we're going to use it later. Now I'm going to open this Ansible folder in my editor, Sublime. So you'll see I have uh, the certificates folder and my public key. There's the shared roles folder we created earlier, previous video, and also the hosts with the web.example.com uh, that I set up earlier. All right, let's create our first playbook. So we just create a new file in the root, and I'm going to go ahead and save it and call it bootstrap.yaml. And now I'm just going to paste a few commands into this file. So this is a YAML file, so you put the three dashes in the front, and this is the start of a play. So I'm going to give it a name, Bootstrap Server for Future Ansible Runs. It's going to be applied to all hosts, and I'm doing a new command here where I'm specifying the remote user is going to be root. So it's going, when I run the Ansible playbook command, it's going to connect to the server as root to run the commands. The next line to add involves variables. So I'm going to 
copy this uh, set of lines for setting variables. So we're doing vars, and we're setting the username equal to Creston. So you would change this to your username. And this user pass needs to be the crypted password. So that is from what we just created using the make password utility. We're going to use these variables to create a new user on our server. Now we're going to start adding tasks to our playbook. So I'm going to paste in this new set of tasks. So the first task, task is going to update the apt cache. So update the repository so it's uh, the most up-to-date it can be. I'm going to use the apt module and set update cache to equal yes. The next task that we want to add is doing and upgrading the software packages. So I like do using aptitude, and you can do a safe aptitude upgrade by using the apt module and specifying upgrade equals safe. Now the names that you see here, this is whatever you want to name these tasks. Uh, similarly for the plays, you can name it whatever you want. Um, Ansible outputs this before it runs the task so you know what um, it's doing as it's running. Now you'll see there's two additional lines here that are new. One is async. So typically when you run a task, after a certain amount of time it times out uh, if it's waiting to complete. So for long running tasks, you want to set up to run in an asynchronous fashion. So it runs and then it checks with the server periodically to see if it's done running that task. Because all tasks are run on the server. So I'm specifying 600 seconds. Um, so at the end of 600 seconds, it will stop um, doing the upgrade. And I've found this is more than enough time for it to do the upgrade. And it's going to poll every five seconds to see if it's done. So if it's done earlier than that, it'll return and continue running the additional tasks. The next task I'm going to add is adding a new user. So I'm using the user module, and you'll see that the syntax I'm using is slightly different. So I could place all of these arguments on this line with a space between them. So name equals username space, password equals uh, the password, shell equals, etc. However, you'll see this, this greater than symbol use because that means it's going to do the arguments in a multi-line fashion. Um, so you'll see this when you're looking at different playbooks, maybe on Ansible Galaxy. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a new user with the name username. So it's using the variable um, that I set above up here, username Creston. So it will substitute username for Creston using this um, mustache token. Similarly, for the password, it'll, it will use this cryptid password. It'll specify the shell for the new user. Um, it will add it to a, the sudo group so that then this Creston user will be able to run sudo commands. And by specifying a pen yes, it means that this group will be added as opposed to uh, replacing certain groups. In addition, I'm also going to generate an SSH key for this user and specifying uh, the number of bits for that key. And finally, just s stating that uh, this user should be present. Now for the next task, let me just fix the formatting here, okay? So I want to add my workstation user's public key to the new user. So there's an authorized key module, and I'm specifying my Creston user on the server I want to add this key to its list of authorized keys. So this is a new syntax that's using this lookup function. So it's going to look in the certificates slash um, ID underscore RSA public key that we placed in the certificates folder up here. So it's going to look at this local file, do a lookup and take the contents of that file and replace it in the key. 
So think of this kind of like a variable because as you can see, it's using the uh, must, mustache uh, token again. So it's going to put the key that's in this file in here and copy it up to the server. So that will then allow me to connect to this Creston user using public key authentication. Now, one more thing you'll notice is that this syntax is different than the syntax I used here. So this is one way to do multi-line arguments. You can use the greater than symbol and then say name equals something. However, you can also do it in a key value way. So for example, you're saying the authorized key and you don't need anything here, but you can say user is the key and the value is this. And this is the multi-line syntax I tend to prefer. I find it more readable uh, than this. Um, so throughout the course, I'll try to keep it uh, in this style here just for readability. Okay, so the next, I'm gonna copy um, three tasks here but they're all pretty much the same. What they're going to be doing is adding or changing, I should say, a line in file. So that is the module we're going to be using. Because we're going to be making configuration changes to the file on the server, etc slash ssh slash shd config. So these three tasks change the SSH port, remove root SSH access, so root can't log in, and then re remove password SSH access. So you can only connect to the server using public key authentication. So line and file is one way of uh, changing configuration settings in a file. Uh, we'll look at templates, et cetera, in a later, in a later video. But just looking at this line and file module, you specify the destination file you want to change. You do a regular expression to find the line in the file you want to modify, and then specify what that line should be changed to. So in this case, I'm changing the port to uh, 30,000. Um, in the one below here, I'm saying permit the root login, make it no. And then lastly, password authentication set to no. And then I'm just stating that the state should be present, so this line should be present in the file. Now, typically when you're changing a configuration file for a service like SSH or a web server, you're going to want to reload or restart that service. So normally you would put a notify command in here and tell it to run a handler. So this is saying notify and run the handler, restart SSH. So you would place this for each line where you're gonna be modifying the configuration. Now, I'm not going to enable the handler, which you'll see why in a second. So the reason why I'm not enabling the handler is because the last task I'm going to add is actually to reboot the server. Now, because up here, we are upgrading the software packages, typically you're going to need to reboot the server. So as part of the bootstrapping process, I give it a command. So I use the command module and just say, I wanna reboot the server. So that will do the reboot and any handlers won't be run because handlers are run at the conclusion of the tasks. And there's no need to run it because SSH will be restarted because the server is being rebooted. However, just for completeness, I'll go ahead and put what the handler syntax is just so you have it. Now, this handler won't be used, but at least you'll have the syntax uh, to use as a reference if you want. So under handlers, you give it a name, restart SSH, and that is how it gets triggered in your notify command. You give it the name of the handler, use the service module, give it uh, the name of the service, and then what you want to do. So it's going to restart uh, the SSH service. But again, because we're rebooting the server, um, even if I specified or uncommented this, 
um, it would never reach this handler and it might give an error message. All right, once you've done that and saved it, let's try running our playbook against our server. So to run a playbook, you use the command ansible hyphen playbook, and then you specify the playbook, uh, bootstrap.yaml. And it would help to actually give it the right name. Okay, so this is the play it's running, Bootstrap Server for Ansible Runs. The first thing it does is it starts gathering facts, so finding out all about the machine, memory, disk space, etc. Then it starts running our tasks, so it's going to update the apt cache. And, you know, this may take a little bit of time. Okay, it completed that. Now it's doing the aptitude upgrade. Now, if you recall, we set this up to be an async task. So after about five seconds or so, you'll see it coming up. It's checked. So it's pulling every five seconds, and it has this many seconds remaining. Because this may take a little bit of time, I'm going to pause the video and, and unpause it when it uh, starts running the remaining tasks. Okay, it finished uh, doing that and in just about 80 seconds, which is great. So now it's running through all the other commands, and it's already finished, and it should be rebooting the server. So I'm going to pause the video, wait, um, you know, 30 seconds or so, and then we'll try connecting up to the server and make sure everything's set up the way we want it. Okay, so I'm going to try to SSH into the server using the command we used before. So SSH root is the user at webexample.com. Now this should fail for two reasons. Number one, we did not enable the root user to connect, so we disabled it. And secondly, we changed the SSH port uh, in our bootstrap config. And as you can see, nothing's happened, and if I left it here, it would time out. So let's try connecting on a different port. So we'll see it immediately comes back, permission denied public key. Uh, now I think that's just because we're trying to connect as the root user. So let's try connecting as my Creston user. So I can type Creston here, or I could just remove the user and try connecting like this. And I've successfully connected to the server as the Creston user. Now the next thing I want to try is try to run a command that requires sudo. Because I connected to the server using public key authentication, I didn't have to put in the password for Creston, but I am using it um, when I, I, that password will be used when I try to run commands that require sudo. So I'm going to uh, run sudo apt get update. So it's going to ask me for my password. I'll type that in. And as you can see, the sudo password worked. So our server has been bootstrapped um, as we have uh, had it specified. So that's work. That works. Thanks. Thanks for watching. To be notified of additional courses or tutorials, visit rubytreesoftware.com slash courses. If you're interested in learning more about my course on Discover Ansible, visit discoveransible.com.